Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the weekly landscape update video I do on this yard uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. I moved into this place in the late fall, early winter. I've, there's quite a few videos in a playlist called New House that I'll link down in the description of this video if you want to catch up. The first few videos, I put the drone up over this place and showed the layout and uh, how, you know, where, where the direction I was going to go. And uh, this is several weeks later now, and it's come a long way, and it still has a long way to go. If you catch up and follow along, there's going to be irrigation going in here. There's uh, lots of planters being uh, potted up. There are uh, it's a greenhouse being built. There will be new fencing, lots and lots of things coming. And I got quite a bit of done this week as well. So let's get started on that. Uh, two of the things are um, I, I, got, I planted some of the containers that I got from Michael Carr Designs and some of the annuals and perennials that I had done from seed I've got planted right here uh, and an herb garden over there. Those three things I'm going to walk through uh, after I uh, um, uh, talk about a few other things first. But those will just, like I say, I'll just walk through those and show you the actual plants. Uh, the vegetable garden over here, which you know, I would actually prefer if I had full sun throughout to just blend the vegetables right into my landscape. Um, I, I actually prefer that. But m the majority of the sun in this yard is definitely going to be over here during the summertime uh, on this north side because there's just no trees whatsoever. So once the sun moves a little north of me, it's just going to cook over here. Uh, so I've got them all consolidated in that area. Uh, tomatoes went in. Um, I've got a few peppers in. The lettuce still looks terrific. I'm going to go into that space next week and plant beans and uh, cucumbers and uh, a few more, uh, a few more uh, pepper plants. But I'm just going to plant them directly into the lettuce space and just let them come up over that because I've got several more weeks to be picking this lettuce. I converted. Um, I, I had this one little area here that I had mulched, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it, so I raked the. Uh, mulch back, added some more compost there, and have turned it into a bit of an herb garden. There, although there's some dahlias planted over there, but there's uh, some dill. And the main reason I grow dill is just for pollinators. Butterflies absolutely go crazy for the flowers on it. So that's actually why I'm growing dill. Um, but there's some thyme, oregano, basil, and I've got some Italian basil in the house that'll be planted there. And uh, rosemary as well. So a little herb garden going in there. Like I say, the tomatoes went in and I planted those deep. Um, they had gotten a little bit leggy. I did them a little bit early, but with tomatoes and uh, peppers, you can plant them deeper uh, if you need to. If they're, if they're a little bit tall and flimsy, you, you can go down uh, quite a bit. I use this uh, uh, little mattock here, this old, uh, really almost an antique uh, mattock here that uh, I, I love this. I love this thing because you can take out some aggression. It does a great job of uh, digging the perfect little spot for a uh, an annual plant of whatever kind. Uh, so, uh, to, like I say, tomatoes are in, peppers are in. Um, I had put a few strawberries in last week. The um, uh, potatoes have gone absolutely crazy over here by the fence. And uh, as they start to try to flop over, I'll tie them up to the fence. But I should have a bumper crop of potatoes coming later uh, in the spring or early summer when that foliage starts to fade. We'll see. We'll see what that looks like. I fertilized everything over there with garden tone. I had a bag of it left over from the uh, from having the garden center, but you could use tomato tone or garden tone or whatever organic vegetable fertilizer you can come across. Um, I'll probably reapply it maybe in five or six weeks, something like that, and uh, just just follow the directions on the bag. That was a little eight pound bag. I used about six pounds of it between the potatoes and everything that I have uh, in that area. Okay, um, okay. I cut down a mulberry. I'm not actually quite finished cutting down a mulberry that had, a bird had landed on this fence in my neighbor's yard at some point and, um, and out came a, a mulberry uh, um, a seed and had grown there. And I've talked about cutting this thing down a couple times because it's truly a noxious weed. Um, this is Morris Alba, which is the Chinese uh, mulberry. There is a native mulberry as well, but this thing right here is truly a noxious weed, but I've said I was going to cut it down a couple of times and then I get a lot of comments. Oh my gosh, you, who would cut down a mulberry? Well, this one is actually destroying a fence, shading a fig. The fig's going to be much happier now. And uh, these things come up everywhere. If you don't know the difference between Morris Alba, which is like I say, the Chinese uh, native uh, mulberry and, and the others, um, I understand where, where, where you might uh, where you might be a little heartbroken that Jim was cutting down a mulberry. But so while I was walking Holly this morning, I took a few photos. Um, uh, would I cut down the mulberry that was growing next to the stop sign? Would I cut down the mulberry that was growing from under the holly? Would I cut down the mulberry that was actually growing out of the concrete? 
How about the one that was out competing the English Ivy? Or the one that was competing with the Chinese Wisteria? <laughs> so there, there's a few photos for you just to show you how crazy. That's just one block around the neighborhood. I took those and those were the extreme versions. But uh, birds eat those seeds and just they're everywhere. But anyway, okay, mulberry's down. So I'm gonna walk you around real quick and show you the containers that I've gotten planted so far. I'm running irrigation in all of them. And so as this project develops, you'll see the irrigation all start to come together and I'll plug into these containers. And uh, um, I'll, I'll, like I say, I'll show you all that as that unfolds. You're gonna see a separate video on all of the containers being done at one time sometime in the next few days. Here's one group of containers here. And this is where I ran this uh, drip tubing uh, up through them. That's just a solid black uh, quarter inch tube. And uh, they come out of the bottom of them over here. They'll all get tied together and emitters will go into the uh, containers. This is one group of containers. Keep an eye out for the container uh, planting video and uh, you'll, I'll go through uh, each of the uh, varieties that I've used, used in them. But obviously here I've got this uh, Carolina Sapphire uh, Cypress here and uh, there's a Lamandra right there and there's various you know verbena here and that's uh, the blue one is bacopa and uh, this is a uh, cryptomeria called limeade that i got from the uh, arboretum last year and there's a uh, wandering jew and the uh, sweet sweet potato vine and so on and so forth but like i say uh, keep an eye out for that video and i'll put all the names on the screen when i do that video here's that david viburnum that went in last week and uh, this is this uh, tacoma Right here, uh, Bells of Fire is this variety. I've got a yellow one that's going in over at the, uh, at the shop. And uh, right here is that Merlot lavender, that variegated one from Southern Living Plant Collection. And then a, uh, another lavender there. There's a Strobilanthes on this end and a spike and uh, a, a darker uh, sweet potato vine there. Then there's a couple containers over here. I actually put this palm this one is actually hardy in my area. I'll eventually have to drop it down in the ground. Uh, would not like to be frozen in this container. There's some begonias around it. And uh, there's a lemon sedum and uh, a little dwarf cryptomeria right there. Like I say, I'll go over these individually in a, in a separate video when I get all the containers done. So you can see it's starting to come together near the house now with these uh, containers that have gone in. Of course, couldn't do much over here while this construction of this uh, porch was going on and here's more containers this is the other another project that will happen very soon is screening around this uh around this unit and i will give it plenty of room um, and then this other construction material is going to go on the driveway i got to go to the metal recycler from the siding that was on the house and that building and so the garden's coming together over there and uh, this is the area with the uh, herbs in it right there and then um some of the other things that went in, there's some holipterum on this corner right here. This is an annual that uh, has white flowers with yellow centers. And there's some uh, celosia that went in. These are things I did from seed. Uh, there's some butterfly weed uh, right here and uh, some giant marigolds uh, right there and uh, some rudbeckia right there. There's a couple different uh, groupings of those. And uh, this, uh, the weeping red bud is finally uh, leafing out. I don't know if you'll be able to see that foliage on it right there, but it should get some roots pretty quickly and I can drop it in the ground. There's tons of other containers uh, everywhere here that uh, are laid out to go in and you'll see those things going in next week. But uh, there's just gonna be a ton of color going in back here from all the things that were seeded. So for next week, more of the vegetable garden will go in. Uh, the rest of the containers uh, should be uh, finished uh, planting. There's a bunch of them up here in front of the uh, shop. If you Hopefully you can see those. I'm gonna get started on this uh, greenhouse over here. So there'll be a lot of progress, hopefully this next week. But look for this video on the uh, container plants and I'll have all the names on the screen when I do that one. Uh, same thing, once I get the rest of these annuals and perennials planted back here, I'll do a complete tour and uh, put all the names on the screen so that you can uh, uh, follow along with what, what I have going on back here. Thanks for watching and look for these uh, update videos every Wednesday.